Hello everybody and welcome back. As always, my name is Abby and this is the Knits by AJ Knitting Podcast and this is episode 37. Um, I am in a new filming space again. Um, I am no longer in my living room and I am no longer on that side of the room. I am now over here um, in a little bit of a nicer spot for lighting and everything. I've got windows on both sides so we've got a little bit more even lighting and we have also been blessed with the sun coming out today, which is a nice change to the, I think it's been like a week of dreary drizzle here in the UK. Um, so that's quite nice. Uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful week. And I have got a few bits of knitting to talk through today. I have no finished objects and I have four whips to talk about. I do have one whip, um, the vanilla socks that I spoke about last week that I knitted for my husband. I did not pick them up this week. So they are still a whip, but they will not be a part of today's podcast because I didn't work on them. <laughs> so yeah, I do have four other whips to talk through today. So yes, my first whip is my longest standing whip and it's my Circonet cardigan by Kate Davies Designs. And I am knitting this up out of Drops Daisy in the colour pistachio ice cream and this yarn was very kindly gifted to me um, by a company called Hobby Jobby so, and I am an affiliate with them so my affiliate links will be left down below. So a big thank you to them for sending me this yarn as always. And I have made a fair bit of progress on this week. After I spoke about this last week and everybody else, like everyone in the comments was saying about how much they loved it and like how much it is an autumn project and, and that like I should carry on with it. And I kind of, I spoke last week about how I managed to kind of like talk myself into finishing this. Um, so yeah, I it kind of lit a fire underneath me to get going on this project. And I'm really glad I have, to be honest, because today it is cold. It It's, it's the coldest day we've had so far and it's like eight degrees outside, eight degrees Celsius, um, which is 46.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's, it's chilly. It was chilly this morning. Hence why I am in a proper jumper for the first time in what feels like forever. This is Metamorphic by um, Andrea Mowry. I should have said that earlier. But yes, yeah, so I I really feel like I need this cardigan now because it is getting chilly. Um, I don't think it's going to stay this cold. Um, I think it's going to warm up again. But I am knitting this up in a size 2. I'm using a variety of different needles. So I used a 3.25, a 3.5 and a 3mm needle for this. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned that last week. I can't, I can't really remember. Last week feels like a long time ago at this point. But here we are now um and yeah this is definitely taking on shape so last week i had done the left side and now obviously i have now done the right side as well um and i have done the back so here is the back panel in all of its glory so yes back panel is all done and then the pattern says that you need to put your stitches on hold for the neckband so that is what I have done. I found these like really long, they're like really long safety pins to be honest aren't they? I found these in my stash so I thought oh, I'll just use that because otherwise um, I was running out of the like silicon cord things, barber cords, keep your stitches on hold cords, <laughs> I can't remember what they were called but yes um I was running out of those so I decided I was going to use these just for now so yeah quite a lot of progress and then obviously I have done the three needle bind off at the shoulder on both sides and I've picked up for my first sleeve and I have been doing my utmost to try and get these sleeves done um everything is kind of sped up a little bit because this is obviously much smaller circumference and it it's a balloon sleeve, so it's essentially just knit a tube and then do the decreases at the end. So I've kind of worked out that I need to do maybe like four and a half um, pattern repeats. So from here to here, this kind of square is one pattern repeat. 
I'm really hoping that this is in focus and not that. So I apologise if the focus is a bit funny. I am still a work in progress, 37 episodes in. Um, so yeah, this square here is one pattern repeat. And so I've worked out that I think I need to do four of those and a half of one to get to the length I need for the sleeve. But again, like I've been doing with almost every step in this project, I think I'm going to knit to the length that I think I need and then block it. I am doing my sleeves on a 3.5 millimetre needle. I knit the knit rows of, my, of the body of this on a 3.25 um, and that is purely because I just didn't want there to be a potential gauge change on the sleeves. I don't think there is. I'm pretty sure that it's the same. Um, and so I am glad that I have gone up that needle size. But yeah, I, um, I just want to double check the length of the sleeve. And also I think it would be nice to do a full project block just to kind of see exactly how this is fitting because I would rather do like a frog of some of it and then re-knit it at this point with just one sleeve done then get to the end where I'm about to put the button band on and then realise actually no I'm not sure how this is fitting I think I would rather make some modifications and I think that's kind of just been my stance on this the whole way through just like okay just see how it goes and then block it because it is all over cables um, there's no like moss stitch pa panel or anything um, like there has been in other cable projects that I have knit, the self-drafted big cable jumper that I've knit and also like my husband's Moby. Um, they have had like quite big moss stitch sections, whereas this just doesn't. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I, I, I think it's also, I just don't, I'm not hugely confident my, in my gauge and I just want to make sure that it is, gonna fit how I want it to fit. Also, really annoyingly, I don't think I have ever knit stockinette as neatly as this has knit up and this is reverse stockinette so it's kind of sort of making me feel like oh next time I knit a stockinette jumper should I just knit it inside out but that um yeah that that would be quite an ordeal. But I'm really enjoying knitting up this sleeve. It's nice to have this like reverse stockinette panel um, for the underneath of the sleeve and just have the cables on the top of the sleeve just to break it up a little bit. And I am finding that these rounds go so quickly um, and I'm really enjoying knitting them up. Um, so yeah, that is where I am with this. I will get some B-roll of me wearing this. Um, now that I have got some space to do so. I am a little bit concerned, however, that I am running low on yarn. So I can't remember how many balls of yarn I have used so far, but this is what I have left of my current ball um, for this sleeve. And then I have got four balls left. So actually maybe, maybe I'm not as concerned about my, the amount of yarn I've got left because I have got, what, another, this should get me quite a little, well, a little bit further down the sleeve and then I've got, I can use another ball and then, well, there's like a ball and a, I didn't, I did not start with a full ball for this sleeve. So yeah, I think I'm going to be okay yarn wise. I was having a little bit of a panic as I was getting towards the end of the body about how much yarn I had, but I think I'm going to be okay. Um, but I'm glad I've decided to do the sleeves first because if I am ever going to have to join in another dye lot worth of yarn, in case there is a discrepancy in the colour, I would rather do that for the button band than like halfway down a sleeve and like have half a sleeve a different colour. So that is where I am with my circuit. It is definitely, definitely starting to take shape now and I am really excited to get going on this again. And I cast this on on June the 20th, so it has currently been on my needles for 85 days. Now every part of me is going, oh, I really want to get this off of the needles before it hits 100. But we shall see. So that was whip number one. Whip number two is my daughter's Segenfree Jacket Junior. 
yeah this has hit a bit of a speed bump this week not anything to do with the pattern purely me um and so yeah i will get onto that in just a second so i am knitting this up in folk fingering in the color alton broad and i have made some progress this week so again i have finished the body on this one and um the ribbing on this it felt like it was taking an absolute age i felt like i was knitting ribbing for days it just went on forever um it didn't obviously actually take that long but it just felt like it was going on and on and on um i changed up the bind off on this so the pattern suggests doing a knit bind off um, I decided I didn't want to do that. I decided to go for a tubular bind off um, because I did a tubular cast on at the neck. Um, and I did, in fact, remember to put all of my buttonholes in. Um, that was a, a real fear. I kept forgetting to put the buttonholes in and then having to ladder back and put buttonholes in. But yeah, I think this is looking really lovely. It's definitely a really good length on her. It's a little bit too long at the moment, but. My daughter is quite tall um, and she only ever seems to grow upwards instead of outwards so having that extra length is definitely um, something that I am very happy with because it means that she will get a little bit more wear out of this. Um, I'm really interested to see how this blocks out as well um, now that because my swatch didn't really grow that much but the, this is obviously quite heavy. Uh, well much heavier than my swatch so I'm wondering sort of how the garter is going to behave and also how the ribbing is going to behave because in my experience garter wants to do this whereas ribbing wants to do this so I'm sort of wondering how that's going to play out in a full garment um so yeah that's going to be quite interesting so I finished the body I obviously didn't have that much left of the body to go um this was where I was last week um and then I picked up the sleeve and this is where I've hit a bit of a speed bump because I managed to pick this sleeve up inside out um I accidentally picked up the sleeve stitches on the right side instead of the wrong side I just wasn't concentrating I forgot to look which side my marker was on because this patterning is the pattern is almost identical on either side so the pattern even states to put a marker on your right side so that you can easily tell which side is which. And obviously I forgot to check for my marker and picked up the, sli the sleeve stitches on the wrong side. So luckily I have only knit, I think it's about two centimetres of sleeve. Um, and I will just have to pull that back and pick up the stitches on the right side. But on the upside, I don't... I'm not too annoyed about it because I did realise after I had knit the first few rows of garter that I had picked up the stitches with the wrong needle size. I'd accidentally picked them up, like I'd finished the body and then I just went straight on to picking up the sleeves and I'd forgotten that I had changed the needle size for the ribbing at the bottom of the body. So I guess it's kind of a blessing in disguise um, to have to pull back that sleeve because then at least I can make sure that I pick up with the right needle size. I don't think it's actually made any difference to my gauge but for peace of mind I would like to make sure that I pick it up with the right needle size especially at that top bit of the yarn the last thing you want is to have like the yoke finish and then it go like this and then into the sleeve because of like five rows of garter in the wrong needle size so yeah I mean it's not going to be too much of a delay on getting back into this it is just the kind of annoyance of the fact that I did not leave a lifeline in and so I've got to make sure that I pick up all the stitches um, and don't lose any as I go but yeah it's kind of it's 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 on, it's on its way I've reached the point now where all of my um, projects are at the same point um, near enough like they all need sleeves and um, I just have a lot of sleeves to knit um, at the same time which does not often happen with me so yeah it's just yeah this is probably like the most involved patterning 
um, that I'm going to have to knit up with decreases as well. So, yeah, I have probably been favouring my other projects over this, but I would like to get this sorted fairly soon because... My daughter's knitwear wardrobe is severely lacking at the moment because she has grown so much over the summer. And um, things just don't fit like they used to. So yes, that is my where I'm at with this Sigem Free Jacket Junior. It's a lovely pattern. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, I have obviously hit a bit of a snag there. Um, I've never done that before, ever. It was a knitting first. Um, I picked it up the other day to like take some photos for Instagram and I was just sort of like, what on earth? <laughs> I've never done that one before. So I cast this on on August the 19th and so it has currently been on my needles for about 25 days. So that is whip number two. Whip number three is my Salty Days sweater by Veronica Limburg. And I am knitting this as part of the Salty Days Cal, which is a knit along that is being run by Morgan of Morgan Unraveled and Haley of Haley Space, um, who both have channels over here on YouTube. I linked them last week. I will link them again this week and I will put a link to their Instagrams where you can find out more about the knit along. It is still going. Um, you, I think you can still join. Um, it's really lovely, casual, chatty knit along where we're all just knitting the same pattern. There's no prizes or anything. It's just a really casual knit along um, of people knitting the same pattern. Um, so yeah, the, the knit along is going from September 1st to November 30th. And yeah, it's just really lovely. Um, so yeah, I am knitting mine up out of some Frogged Drops Lima. Um, I did a bit of digging, I did a bit of digging um, through my order history on Wool Warehouse and I have managed to find which colour this is. So it's it has had a name change since I bought it. So I think when I bought it, it was like light brown or something. Um, but it's now called Torp Grey and it's colour 5310. And um, yeah, so this is where I am now. I'm sorry this is looking so bunched up. The cable that is on on the body is a little bit small. So last week when I showed this, I had just finished the back panel and I just could not put this down this week. It has been one of like my primary projects and yeah, I just just wanted to keep going on it. Every single time I hit a new section, I was like, oh, I'll just do this one. Um, and that just carried on throughout the entire week. So I have obviously picked up for the fronts and I joined those and knit down to where I need to join the body. And I've joined in the round and I have done the lace section, I've done the cable section and then I have done the second lace portion as well. I will try my best to get this in shot. There we go. So that is what the body is looking like. Um, and so what I have left on the body is just one more section of the one by two rib. Um, and then an eyelet portion, uh, sorry, an eyelet section, and then I can start on the body ribbing. But again, I have reached the point where I'm sort of wondering if I'm going to run out of yarn. I wasn't 100% sure on my yardage for, of how much I had. I think I may have done a calculation a little while ago and I've completely forgotten. I think I was like right on the cusp of having enough yarn. Um, but it could teeter over depending on obviously knitting and everything. So I'm kind of playing yarn chicken, but I'm also kind of not. My main priority is to get the sleeves knit. So I'm going to knit down to the bottom ribbing. So there's like this ribbed section and then I believe there's a, an eyelet and a lace section and another eyelet and then there's twisted rib for the cuff. And so I am going to knit down to the last eyelet portion of the sleeve and then I'm going to put this sleeve on hold and knit the other sleeve and then I'm going to finish the body because I thought again if I do need to order new yarn I'm never going to get the same dye lot again because I think I bought this yarn maybe three 
possibly four years ago. Um, and so I'm not going to get the same dye a lot. I am fairly sure that drops are quite consistent on their dye lots, but I'm not sure. So I thought about it and I thought, you know what, if I'm going to have to order more yarn, and it may be the a different colour, like with my um, Circuit A cardigan, I would, rather that, I would rather do a whole section of ribbing in the wrong colour, well not the wrong colour, but in a slightly different colour, and then have both sleeves the same colour, because I feel like if one sleeve was a different colour it would be really really noticeable. But if if it's just the ribbing, um, and preferably if it's just the ribbing on the body, then I don't think it's going to be that noticeable. I think I have done this before where I've had a slightly different dye lot and I've just done the ribbing in the different dye lot and it has not been noticeable at all. But also because this is so textured, I'm wondering if it will even make a difference. I mean, the chances are if I do run out of yarn and I have to order an extra ball, it could be almost identical um, and it like this my whole panic will be unnecessary but yeah it's a thought process that I've had to kind of go through this week but I did also put the collar on um I did that in the right well in the same yarn that I've got in stash um I decided to do the folded collar and I did the um I did I did the ribbing and then instead of binding off and then sewing it down I um, picked up one of the cast on stitches, knit it together and then bound off the <clears throat> bound off the live stitches and the cast on stitch knitted together together um, and I find that that gives me a bit more stretch in my neckbands. If I sew it down I feel like I, I tighten up quite a lot um, in the sewing process and so this gives me a little bit more stretch and I can get this over my head perfectly fine so not a worry for me um and i really loved the look of the like puffy folded neckband um i know quite a lot of people have done theirs with a single neckband um but yeah i really love the look of that puffy folded neckband i think it's so i just think it's so lush looking um and this being a wool and alpaca blend it's going to be very warm um despite the lace sections so yeah, I just wanted it to be a little bit more of like a proper autumn winter piece. Um, and I also have, find that I have a bit of a problem with like, so this one is just a single neckband and it does tend to flare a little bit. I have to kind of like dampen it and sort of almost re-block it every now and then to get it to sit nicely. So yes, really flying down this sleeve. I know there was a lot of issues um, in the kind of group chat of people thinking that the sleeves are going to be quite small. I do think these sleeves are a little bit skinny, but this ribbing is so stretchy. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Um, I am knitting my sleeves on a five millimeter, the same as I knit the body on. And so, yeah, I don't anticipate the sleeves being too much of an issue for me. Um, I'm knitting the extra small, the smallest size, um, and so, yeah, I think these sleeves look really silly at the moment. They really need blocking out so that they kind of match where the rest of the jumper is sitting. Uh, but they're not like really tight to my arm, so I don't think, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Um, I have done the decreases down the sleeve as well um so I guess that's the other thing like if you were really stressed out about the width of the sleeve especially on like the top of the arm then I suppose what you could do is like leave out the decreases until you're much further down the sleeve um but obviously you'd have to work out the stitch counts for the eyelet and lace but you could always just not decrease in the ribbing and then decrease when you get to that portion for the that portion of the sleeve that has the eyelets and the lace on it just to give yourself a little bit more room um, I don't think I'm going to need to do that and actually I'm kind of if it has got slightly smaller sleeves I'm not too fussed about that because this is really big on me 
um, in the body and so it, I don't want too much bulk because if I'm going to have to put my arm in a coat like I did this morning I kind of like to be able to not have so much bunched up fabric around my armpit area um, underneath my coat but yeah I think that I really like how this is fitting I really like how oversized it is um oh yeah this guy is um he's still getting used to the like back to school routine he's very grumbly today very grumbly why are you so grumbly huh <laughs> he's like my uh my mascot for the podcast You gonna go in your bed? Okay, I think he might be sticking around. Um, so I cast that on on September the 1st and I currently have had it on my needles for around about 11 days. So not, am I boring you? <laughs> okay, so whip number four is my Colorwork Cuff Clubs for the month of September. And I've not done as much work on these okay, bye, as I thought I was going to. Um, usually I cast these on and then I just fly through them. But this week I've just been preoccupied on jumper knitting really. Um, it's definitely taken more of my attention than, um, than my socks have. Um, and so... I have put the heels into both of them and then I have finished the gusset decreases on this one um, but I have not finished the gusset decreases on this one so that is where we are with these at the moment so yeah not a lot of progress on these um, it was <laughs> It was a quick start and then I've just sort of slowed down, but that's fine. I've still got loads of time to work on these. I mean, it's only the 11th of September, so they've really not been on my needles for that long. Um, and I'm sure I will get a fair bit of work done on these whilst I'm editing this week. I've got quite a lot of editing to do, so perfect sock knitting time. But I am still really enjoying how these are knitting up. They are so bright, so bright. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just really enjoying the dark stripes with the really light gingham at the top. Um, I think it's a lovely contrast with Grumbly Dog in the background. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on, back to working on these. I am looking forward to being able to wear them as well. It's just they have not been a priority this week. Um, but I'm sure there will be a nice welcome break. <laughs> to all of the sleeve knitting that I have got to do this week. A uh, quick rundown of the yarns that I am using. So my main colour is Rico Designs Neon Socks in the colour 05 or the green. Um, the gingham is also made up of West Yorkshire Spinners Signature Full Ply in the colour Marshmallow and Cascade Heritage in the colour Citron. And then my stripes are obviously the Rico Designs and West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature Four Ply in the colour Spruce. So those are the yarns that I am using. Um, and yeah, I am knitting these up in tandem. I am knitting the size medium like I always do. And I am now using a 2.25mm needle um, after using a 2mm for all of my colour work. Um, these are definitely looking much more even um, in gauge between the colour work and the stripes. There's not as much of a change as there was on my last pair um, between the colour work and the rest of the body of the sock. So I think I've managed to figure out my gauge a little bit better um, because I am aware of the fact that my, my colour work issues are the opposite to what everybody else's colour work issues seem to be. Um, most people tighten up when they knit colour work. I apparently just get really sloppy and loose. So, yeah, my floats are gorgeous though. I, I'm really enjoying what the inside of these look like. Um, I think that's absolutely stunning. But yeah, just gonna keep keep going down the get through the gusset decreases on the second one. Oh, I've dropped a stitch. 
there we go. Uh, yeah, get through the gusset decreases on this second sock and then it's just knit the foot. And I think the stripes are really going to help speed that up for me this month as well. But yes, I cast these on on September the 2nd and so they have currently been on my needles for 10 days. And those are my Colourwork Cuff Club socks. So that is everything I have got knitting wise today. So I do have a few plans for this week. I would like to finish my Colourwork... Blah, blah, blah. I would like to finish my Colourwork Cuff Club socks. I would like to finish the sleeve, the first sleeve, on both my Circane cardigan and my Salty Days sweater and I would like to re-pick up and start knitting the sleeve on my daughter's Sogenfri card... jacket junior. So that is where I am knitting wise for this week. Um, I was, as always I would love to know what you guys are knitting if you want to let me know down in the comments. Um, and you can always catch up with me on Instagram and Ravelry as at Knits by AJ if you want to see what I'm knitting on at the moment and more kind of up-to-date progress. I try and post to my Instagram stories most days, but I also realise how often I forget to do it. Um, but yes, if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Um, and if you are new here and you want to stick around, then please do consider subscribing. Um, I love having you all here, um, but yes, I hope you all have a wonderful week, hope you get lots of knitting done, um, and I will catch up with you all next week with more of my own knitting. So happy making! Mm -hmm.